Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Yu Shu, and I work at NERSC in the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. So today I'm going to share with you a little bit of our experience with SciDB, but on science data. Okay. Oops. All right. Oh, it's here. Nice. Again. <laughs> uh, let me see. So should I wave to some magic person somewhere? <laughs> okay, so I'll just say next slide, is that okay? <laughs> Here we go. Cool, finally. So what is NERSC? NERSC is the supercomputing center for open science in the Office of Science of Department of Energy. That's pretty long, sorry. Uh, so we have a couple of petaflop machines on the floor. And we have, because we do open science, the non-classified staff, right? So we have a lot of users and a variety of different use cases, projects working on it. And more and more users recently are coming with petabytes of data on hand and not sure what they want to do, okay? So that's why we have a very active, oops. So that's why we have a very active efforts working on a lot of different uh, analytic projects and trying to see uh, how we can help the users to do their anal analysis much more efficiently. For example, beside Hadoop, we also have a Spark and Hadoop. Uh, but besides SciDB, we also have a Spark Hadoop cluster. So think like iterative in memory, had map reduce for science. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So we do some research, some engineering, and more importantly, we uh, try aim to provide a production service that our users can rely on, the science project can rely on at the end of the day. So if we look into the science community, actually a lot of data are like arrays, right? So it can be a dense arrays like the climate simulation or the brain MRI imaging, or it could also be the sparse arrays like labeling the genes with features in bioinformatics or putting billions of stars in catalogs like Yasek is doing, all right? So what we did at NERSC is that we set up a large SciDB cluster. I won't say how large, okay? And then we invite science projects to come in. Um, and we not only provide the software and hardware, and we do one step more, which is that we hold their hands to do the first uh, round of loading and first round of data analytics. So we form a partnership with them. And we have been running this project for a little bit over a year now, and now we have more than 10 science projects on board and covering many science domains like astronomy, uh, climate science, bioimaging, genomics, blah, blah, blah. And it's still growing. And this table, very quickly, it just shows you that people are not only doing the simple things like me and Max count on SciDB, and they're doing pretty sophisticated stuff like classification and clustering. And yes, in science, we do classification as well. And uh, so just to give you one quick example, just to make it concrete. So what you have here is one, one terabyte cube from bioinformatics. You don't need to know what's in it, okay? So what you wanna do is a user from the web gives some input criteria and SciDB will slice it, filter, and aggregate, and produce a much smaller 2D matrix on the top left corner. And then we feed that 2D matrix into some bi-clustering algorithm, and the bi-clustering result is sent back to the user. So uh, this is a very elegant workflow that SciDB can execute, and it, everything takes in seconds. So that's the web scale. So you can't let a web user wait an hour, right? So 
Okay, so some good things, good and bad about CIDB. So a lot of good things of CIDB, I won't repeat those things. And especially the CIDB, the P4 folks are pretty friendly. That's what I wanna say. And, and of course, on the downside, there's still a little bit of learning curve that you need to climb to get used to it. But once you climb it, it's fun. But uh, I think it, the curve can be like lowered a little bit by uh, something like auto chunking or stuff. And also the user control will be nice to make it production. So finally, since our project is still running, so if you are a science project and you are thinking of trying out CIDB, we should probably talk and we may be able to form a partnership. So if you are out of science and you wanna learn a third party opinion about CIDB, we may also talk as well. All right, thank you very much.